Welcome to Where's My Sports At. On today's pod, I'm joined all the way from Canada by good friend Don to talk about the NHL, or that's their National Hockey League, and specifically Don's team, the Winnipeg Jets. Don, my friend, how have you been? Uh, we've been we've been excellent in this end of the country. Uh, we're just uh, having the joy and pleasure of surviving a deep freeze where our low temperatures last night were somewhere between minus 40 and minus 50 degrees Celsius. And so it's been a a bit of a challenge as of late. <laughs> you know, that as we were saying uh, before we started recording, that actually sounds really appealing right now because we've got a 40-degree day planned today <laughs> and we've had the air con on since 6.30 in the morning. So, you know. Oh, my goodness. That sounds really appealing to me. So now you're, you're heading off on a few days on holiday. You're looking forward to that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the deep freeze is, uh, is what it is. And we, uh, we don't necessarily leave here because we don't like here, but we sure enjoy traveling. So we're going to be... <laughs> My wife and I will be traveling through Thailand and, and Cambodia and, and destinations like that. And so we're really looking forward to it. Oh, it sounds amazing. I think you're definitely going to go to a different extreme, aren't you? You're going from the deep freeze to the, the sweltering heat of Southeast Asia. Yeah, it's going to be an enjoyable challenge, I, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and how long are you gone for? I can't quite remember. You're telling me. Uh, we'll, we'll be gone for about five weeks. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, well, yeah. I appreciate you uh, giving up some of your important time before your, your trip to catch up with me today. Oh, no worries. And, and now, uh, for the benefit of our listeners, recently I was up in Canada and I had the uh, the pleasure of going to a Winnipeg Jets game. Hence, I've, I've got the gear on and, and the hat from yourself. And uh, it really there you go. It was the first time in, uh, that I've actually seen a full game and I actually really loved it. Hence why I've got you on uh, on the podcast today. Because I want to talk oh. a bit more about the game and also about the, uh, the Winnipeg Jets. So before we get into the Jets, who are currently number one on the overall NHL table, I sort of thought we'd go into a bit of fundamentals of the game, just so that people, sure. if they want to watch the game, um, they've got a bit of an understanding, pretty much exactly what you gave to me um, before the game, and that helped me enjoy being able to watch it. So it seems like they have a really long season, in compar- well, in comparison to sports that we have, it seems like a really long season. Yeah, they, uh, they've got a pretty grueling schedule. Um, the regular season lasts uh, a total of 82 games. Uh, of which in the current season, they're pretty much at the halfway mark right now. They, uh, the Winnipeg Jets, I believe, have completed uh, 42 games as of today, if I'm correct. And um, a little update on their standing. They've uh, recently just slipped into, I believe, it's third place. Oh, no. In the complete standings. Only because they did lose a single game. And the fact that uh, uh, the other teams have played a little bit more than the Jets have. So the Jets are a few games behind their competitors in the number of games played. So uh, the standings being as tight as what they are, they can jump from anywhere from four, first to fourth place in, in a single day. And so one loss is not all that critical if you're not in first place, but it, it sure is a novelty when you can sit there for a while. <laughs> Definitely, and they did sit there for a while, didn't they? Yeah, they've been there for a bit, and as of tomorrow, they could be there again. Who knows? So. Yeah, they've got an 82-game schedule, and uh, the playoffs after that are typically it's four rounds to reach the Stanley Cup, and each round could be as long as seven games apiece. So they're potentially playing another 28 games after the regular season is over. Wow, that's 110 games. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a it's a game of attrition a little bit. Like right now, the Jets they lost a the game. Uh, two nights ago, and at this time they've lost their two top scorers of the team. Uh, they've uh, both been injured, and so they're lacking a little bit of their offensive power that they're looking for. So they're, um, as, as a general rule, I think they're doing okay, but they're they're losing a little bit of their offensive power at the moment. I know Kyle Connor's been out since um, early December. Who's the other player they've just lost? Uh, Mark Shifley. Oh no, Mark Shifley. Oh no. Yeah, he's their number two uh, points and goal scorer on the team. And currently, it doesn't sound like his injury is going to be drastic or long-term. He's marked his date today. But they did not have him for the last game. And uh, it was the first loss they've had in, in 10 games or so. So uh, uh, when you lose enough of your offensive power, eventually, sooner or later, it'll it'll catch up to you. I mean, they've got an amazing ability to cover with the rest of the team. But uh, you're still... Uh, um, like I said, some of the offensive power is gone. Wow. And something that um, yeah. that blew me away when we were at the game um, is that 
they you have six players on a team, right? At any one, not not on a team, but six players on the ice for each team at a time. Correct. You've got three forward players. You've got two defensemen and one goaltender. But the yeah. um, in sports that we have down under, generally we'll have um, players in positions, and then we might sub on one player for the other. But what I noticed with this is that you have your, as you talked about, your three forwards and your two defensemen. Is that the three? forwards will all come off at the same time they're, they're, they're lines as you called them so you'll have you'll have these set lines and you replace the whole line all at the one time yeah that is the preference um the team typically consists of four forward lines uh three members per line and then they have three defensive pairings um these are the general team members that are used in a in a, in a game situation and yes um most of the on ice time they prefer that a line doesn't last or stay on for longer than a minute or a minute and a half. Two minutes is a long period of time because they're pretty much uh, they're pretty much uh, out of gas at that point. It's a it's a very fast sprint, and so uh, they don't they like to rotate them quite regularly. And uh, yes, the whole line typically changes at once if if possible. And I can imagine playing potentially 110 games in a season. You really wouldn't want players playing a whole game because they would be burnt out because that, oh. that works out to be just on the regular season, roughly about 2.2 games a week. That's a, a hell of a workload. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a grueling schedule. Uh, uh, to some degree, I think there would be more people that would like to see them minimize that because the amount of injuries that a team can accrue in that period of time I mean, you can start the season with uh, high optimism, but you uh, you lose a couple of your your uh, key players over that period of time, and your uh, your chances dwindle drastically. And I think a lot of it is simply attrition. I mean, yeah, you can have an injury, you can play through for, for a period of time, but at some point you got to say, well, I got to rest this thing, or we got to have surgery to fix an E, or whatever the issue might be. So yeah, it is a it is a grueling schedule. So I want to sort of talk a little bit about the Jets now. Um, sure. You're a lifelong fan, aren't you? Pretty much. You bet. <laughs> Can you remember when you first started watching them? Well, the Jets originally were not an NHL club. They oh, were no. part of a, a league called the WHA. And uh, that's when I remember starting to follow them. And uh, in, their, in their WHA day, which lasted from uh, 1972 to 1979, um, the, the cup that they were playing for at that time was called the Avco Cup. And the Jets managed to actually win it three times in that duration that that league um, was in existence. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, in 79, then uh, the Jets were included in an NHL expansion. And so then they became an NHL franchise, uh, which is not the same franchise as what we have today. Uh, that 1979 team uh, lasted till 1996, and because of uh, demographics and um, and basically money, the difference in value between the Canadian and American currency, um, they felt that the Winnipeg Club was not drawing in enough um, revenue, and so the team we lost the Winnipeg Jets in Winnipeg, and they shifted down to. The Phoenix, uh, they became the Phoenix Coyotes. Mm. So we actually lost our NHL club at that time. And we did. We were without a team here until 2011. Wow. And then we acquired, we acquired a team from the Atlanta Thrashers, which then became the new version of the Winnipeg Jets. So mm. it, hasn't been a, it hasn't been an entirely a smooth sailing for the franchise in Winnipeg. We're considered a small market club. And uh, I guess uh, the, the organizers of the NHL, their bottom line is still cash. Uh, in all professional sports, I think, isn't it? That's really interesting that since, only yeah. since 2011, the current Winnipeg Jets is, has been there. That's correct. It, it seems almost wrong because it just seems like, you know, knowing your, um, your climate, that that should be, you know, every city in Canada should have a team. Yeah, well, unfortunately... Finances still dictate where and when and how, but uh, Winnipeg has a very strong fan base. Uh, unfortunately, we're not nearly the largest fan base, and so that uh, is always an impactful component of their decision making. Yeah, definitely, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you bet. 
Yep. So since you've been around since uh, in the current form iteration since 2011, um, yep. are there sort of like how clubs or, or teams have like primary rivalries? Do, do the Jets have, or in your mind, you know, other people may think differently, but who are the who are the greatest rival teams of the Jets? And is it only in the current iteration or are these rivals from the previous iteration as well? Well, some of the rivalries do come through, and there are some new ones that have been acquired along the way. Uh, back in the Avco Cup days, Winnipeg and the Edmonton Oilers were, uh, yeah, they were real rivals at that time. That was pretty rough and tough hockey that happened at that time. And some of that has followed through to the current version. But uh, I think some of the new, the newest rivalry, the one that comes to mind for me, is with the, uh, the Minnesota Wild. Mm. Um, the Jets, just recently, they had a, a, a two-game back-to-back uh, games with the Minnesota Wild, and they tend to become rough. And when you play two games back to back, it tends to get rougher. <laughs> and so, just as just as an example, uh, on game two, on the opening faceoff, uh, they decided just to drop the gloves and have a fight first before they started playing hockey. <laughs> before the game. Before well, the puck dropped. But nobody paid any attention to the puck because it was time to uh, revisit some of the, uh, the the issues they had from the night before. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant! It's something we didn't get to see yeah. in the game that we watched. No, we didn't get to see it. it, it it's fun to watch, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, they they, they kind of don't like each other very much. I suppose they're our next door neighbors, aren't they? Yeah, they're the closest, uh, next closest team that we have here. Yep. And you generally beat them. Well, they have been a very tough club to play against, and uh, this year we've had more success than in others. And something that um, has made the Winnipeg Jets more competitive against a team like the Wild, the Wild, uh, they're a strong, they're a mature club, uh, and they play a very, very tight defensive structure, which um, is very difficult for other teams to score against. And the Jets have become a very similar club in that fashion. They're, they, they've they started to play a very, very strong defensive structure and which has made them equally difficult to score against. And so their style of play are very similar. So it becomes a very competitive game. Uh, and that's something I want to touch on. And having watched that game and then been watching the highlights, because we don't get it live down here um, for the other games, sure. is I noticed the, um, the Jets play a very constructive style. You know, Every now and then you'll get like a, yes. a breakaway, like I think uh, might have been um, Nikolai Ehlers scored a, a brilliant goal in one of yep. the other games where he it was a breakaway. But generally, they're very sure. constructive around the goal. They're passing the ball around, creating space and, and scoring really quickly. Is that... Um, a style that all teams play? Is it just something that the, the Jets have developed this season? Uh, no, it's not something that they've developed this season. Those breakaway plays that you see, there is something that all clubs are looking for most of the time. Some of them definitely push towards more of that than others. It's a, it's a, it's a win and a losing kind of a situation because you stretch yourself out when you do that. And so if you don't actually score... Uh, often the other team has an increased chance of doing the same thing to you on the return trip because your defensive structure uh, isn't what it should be because you're, you, you've, you've stretched your, your defensive core out mm -hmm. from one end of the ice to the next. And so it's, uh, everybody will take the chance, but you have to be ready to really hustle back to the other end of the ice when, when the other team is coming. So, yeah, that de defensive structure is something that the Jets have really been working on this year uh, last year, just as a as a gauge, um, your shots on goal uh, are kind of a gauge as to how your defense is working. And it was not uncommon last year for the Jets to be outshot by 10 or 15 shots as opposed to what their offense was generating. So the criticism from the fan base was typically, man, you guys have got to work on your defense. Your defense isn't working. You need to tighten that up. And that is one of the biggest changes that I see from last year's version to this year's version. The Jets are the Jets are playing a much more uh, defensive structure, and they're doing it exceptionally well. Um, one of the metrics that they're using to measure this this year is uh, currently, um, I believe, in the last twelve games, the Jets have uh, minimized their opposition's scoring to two goals or less, and that's in the last twelve games, and that's a very very strong stat. Uh, 
on their defense. So their defense is working very well. And it's been touted as your defense is what wins you championships. If you can minimize your your competition's offense to that degree, you're well situated to uh, to go a long ways in the playoffs. I had noticed that a lot of the games they were winning were 4-2, 5-2, 6-2. And I was actually putting that down to the offensive structure around the opposition's goal. But, you know, it's interesting that you say it's the defense. Well... Yeah, your defense is what minimizes your, your competitor's opportunities. And if you're very strong defensively, uh, sometimes your offense can take greater risks. Mm-hmm. When you know that, that when you have, at times, a defensive uh, defense man will play, play up into the offensive kind of positioning, you got to know that one of your offensive players is going to drop back and cover the, the gap that you're leaving. Mm-hmm. And when you, can, when you can play with that kind of faith, uh, in your other line mates, knowing full well they know what you're doing, they're going to cover your play. You've got an opportunity that you feel you have. You can rush into the opposition, the opposition zone that uh, the rest of your line mates are going to cover for you. And the Jets have been doing this exceptionally well. So I know they've um, they've got a superstar attack. So have they brought in new defensive players, or is it just a, a change in, in mindset? Do you think? I think the coaching is really, really is is what's brought this apart. Uh, Rick Bonus is, is something of a new coach for us. He's been here now. I believe this is for his second full season this year. And um, the Jets were in a similar position last year where they are now in the standings. They weren't quite as good. But in the second half of the season, their, their system of play that they were trying to um, instill, it kind of fell apart. It, it almost seems like the game of hockey is a little bit of a – I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a momentum kind of a game where when you have faith in the rest of your team that, okay, we're maybe down one or two and it'll be okay because our defense is strong and our offense will get their opportunities and we'll win in the end. And so you don't panic, you don't make rash decisions, you stay home, you do your job, you believe in the system that you're instilling, and it works. And that, I believe, I, could, I would very strongly say, I think that's due to coaching. Uh, Rick Bonus, I think, has done an exceptional job and uh, it kind of fell apart last year. We did make the playoffs, but the Jets themselves were not playing well structurally. They lost in the first round. And so coming into this year, um, another stat that kind of plays into this a little bit is the fact that, yes, Rick Bonus is still there. He is uh, instilling his method of play. But the Jets lost 50% of their forwards from last year to this year. So they've actually had to retool. Out of the 12 forward players that they use on a day-to-day basis, six of them were new this year. Wow. Yeah. And so when you see that kind of a stat and what they've been able to do, um, I, I, I mean, I also, I mean, they've brought in some excellent players. They've made some great trades. So you have to give that to the management of the club. They've made some excellent decisions here. And I believe uh, Rick Bonus's style of play that he's instilling with the Jets would be another big part of it. Yes, the players are doing well, the coaches are doing well, and I think the management is doing well. So uh, I think they're they're headed in the right direction. It's that perfect storm of it all coming together. Yeah, there is that thing. I mean, the next thing you know, you come into contract talks with some of your high caliber players, and you're not able to keep them, and then now you're in a rebuilding position again. Yes. So yeah, there's that. Uh, there's a momentum thing, and and right now they're they're riding it pretty high. They are, and they've um, they've got some good players. And I think there was a good good segue there into talking about players. Like you talked about the defense, but they've got a pretty good goaltender there in Connor Hellebuck, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. He's a he's a Vesna winning goaltender. I think two years he won the Vesna Trophy. And uh, he's one of the top goaltenders in the league. And, and then to back him up, they, uh, they reacquired a goaltender that they had a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago uh, Lauren Borsois. And his, uh, his stats are just as good as Hellebuck's this year. So they've got a, a, a main goaltender and a backup that's just as good. So they're, they're very, very well situated in the goaltending area. Wow, that's good. And, and the um, obviously we all love offense because it, it's the glamorous part of the game. And obviously those Absolutely. are the name the names that I took away from from watching the game. Um, you spoke about yeah. Mark Mark Shifley, but then there's um, the there's also Kyle Connor. Now he up until I'm not sure if it's still the case. Now you might know he was the he's been injured since December 11. But up right. to a couple of games ago, he was still the leading goal scorer, even though he'd been out something like. Eight games. 
Yeah, he was well ahead in the goal scoring department. Um, there's two there's two measurements that I look at when you're looking at the productivity of individual players. There's the goals that they score and also the assists that they get. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Scheifele, who currently, as of today, had 27 assists on the year and uh, 14 goals. So basically twice as many assists as goals. And in a lot of cases, the guys that are making the play uh, – are invaluable. Like if you could have a player that would give you 50 assists on the years and not score a goal, that'd be fantastic. Yes. Cause he's the one who's setting you up. So yeah, as, as it sits today, Kyle Connor has, uh, had 17 goals on the season. And so far there's no one on the Jets club that has surpassed that. So looking at the front line, I looked up the positions. You have a center, you have a right wing, you have a, a left wing. Now, Mark Scheifele right. is a center. So is it right. is it um, your center? Is that, are they typically, as you say, a setting up player as opposed to a scoring player? Because you look at Cole Connor as a left wing. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that, it, that would not be the case. Your centerman would be just as likely to score a goal as your wingers. Uh, it's just that some players are more adept at um, setting up others to score. Uh, it's their, it's for whatever reason, they're just really, really good at it. And you got those guys that have the special hands that just seem to be able to put it in the goal no matter where they're, where they're set up from. And so it just it speaks to the individual talent of the player. Uh, it's not positional whether you're a, a playmaker or whether you're a goal scorer. So you're not necessarily put in those positions because you have a particular skill. Like so, it could be center, left wing, right wing. Um, there's no uh, rhyme or reason to why you're in any one of those particular positions. Well, those positions do have specific different styles of play on the ice, and it takes um, it takes quite a bit of time and talent to positionally learn how to play it correctly and well. So most guys can spend a, a career playing right wing and always stay there because that's what they're familiar with. A centerman plays the game somewhat differently than the wingers would, uh, positionally and what you're doing on the ice and what your what your assignments are uh, will be different. And so it's uh, yeah, it it it's what you've learned to do, and so that's typically where you'll stay. And I suppose it's about building those combinations, as you spoke about earlier, like with your, your offensive line, you'll want players that play well together. So you you must you may make allowances on how whether you put them centre, left wing, right wing, just to have that certain combination on the ice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you kind of get that sixth sense of where, where your wingers are if you're a centre man. You don't necessarily have to look for them, and you'll throw pucks in a certain area knowing they'll be there. You don't have to necessarily see them. You know how they play, where they play, how fast they play. Uh, it's a familiarity. I mean, you play with these guys 82 games in a season. Uh, you kind of get to know how they handle the puck, where they're going to be. And so that can really, really, once you get a, a line that gels together, uh, you really don't want to take them apart. And on the opposite side of that, when you've got lines that just aren't working, the coaches will free, free, free to juggle it. And Okay, let's see what this combination does. See if these guys can work well together. And if not, they'll juggle it again. So looking at the, the main offensive line, I think it was Shifley, Velarde, and Ehlers was the, the number one line, obviously, with Connor not there. Do you know who's slotting yeah. into um, Shifley? Are they bringing Perfetti in? Or? Um, as of the last game, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch that game, so I didn't look at the line combinations. But I know they, uh, they had an injured centerman who has – he was down in their affiliate club – for conditioning. He was healthy enough to play again. His name was Kupari. Uh, they acquired him from the LA Kings last year, and he's been injured. He's a young fella, but I understood that they pulled him up from the minors into the Jets lineup for last game. I don't know if they played him or not. I'm assuming that they did, but I don't know how he fared because, unfortunately, like I said, I wasn't able to uh, wasn't able to watch that game. But uh, So, yeah, they do have some uh, depth of talent in the minors right now. These guys would love to have an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And Kupari has played in the NHL before, so he's a seasoned veteran. He's a young guy, but he's been there before. So I know they pulled him up, and time will tell. I'll see how that fares. I'm not sure how he, how he did. Nice. Now I'm going to I'm going to ask you to delve into your your wealth of knowledge on this one. So um, huh. Cole Connor probably due back end of this month. Can you see him returning to the first line and displacing someone like Ehlers, who's had a fantastic season? Absolutely. You can? I don't think there's any doubt that he won't be on the first line. 
Ah, wow. They've been playing so well. I don't know. I don't know who Bonus is going to bump, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I can't see them taking him off of the first line. Ehlers has had a great season, though. Like him and there's a few uh, others. Sorry, you go. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, absolutely. There's, I mean, they could put him on the second line, but, you know, the Jets have such a, a evenly balanced lines. Yes, their fourth line is more of a, a grinder defensive line, maybe not as offensively minded, but very, very talented individuals. And so literally they can play their forwards up and down in the line positions from first to third and every line would be strong and they could do well. So when I say that, yes, Kyle's going to go on the first line, I don't know if it would really matter. Put him on the third line and, and, and get, uh, get Lowry to center him and he'd be fantastic. It wouldn't matter. That's so still going to be I on the that- ice, isn't he? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a major asset wherever they're going to play him up and down the line combinations. I don't know that it really matters because at times when you watch the game start, depending on who your opposition starts on the ice for the opening puck drop, there are times when the Jets will put their fourth line on because they're a good defensive pairing against the offense of the opposition team. Mm. So whether you're first or whether you're fourth, um, the Jets have a very balanced lineup and club. Um, I don't know that it matters. And you're talking about the the depth that they've got. Um, is that something that's really holding them in good stead? Because you talked that they've got three, excuse me, good uh, offensive lines. Is that looking across other teams in the league? Is that something that's sort of setting them apart? Just the strength they've got in offense. Yeah, that is a, that is a major plus for the Jets right now. I mean, there's other clubs that have some incredible superstars uh, who take up eighty percent of their budget, and the rest of the team are let's just say about lines are not as balanced. Mm. Um, in my own personal opinion, uh, you're not building a club that's going to win in the long term. Um, I think the Jets and the Jets organization have done an exceptional job in building a team here which has incred- an incredibly balanced lineup. And um, I- I'm cautiously hopeful it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to hold them together for a long time this season. And so they've been very good to watch and very constructive in their play, like from a, a non-hockey yeah. person watching it. The goals don't right. seem lucky. They just seem very constructive in their in their play around the other team's goal. It's like they they know what they're doing and they understand each other. Yeah, I agree with that. They they've got a structure in place as to how they want to play in the offense. Um, the Jets currently, with play five on man, uh, five on five uh, play, they're one of the most uh, productive teams in the league. They've got the highest scoring uh, on five on five play. And uh, so, yeah, they're doing very well in that regard. They've got a lot of room for improvement in areas that they call the special teams. Mm -hmm. When the Jets are on a power play, uh, pardon me, but they're not very good. They're like 27th in the league or something of that nature. They pardon me. They kind of suck, actually. (laughs) I don't know why they can't get their offense working properly with five on four. And also their penalty kill isn't very good. Um, so these are the specialty areas where the Jets, they've got a lot of room where they could actually improve. Five on five play, they're doing very well. But in some of these other areas of the game, uh, yeah, they've got some improvements to work on. Oh, well, hey, it's, I'm sure it's giving, well, this season's probably giving fans like yourself really something to be happy about. Yeah, it's it's been an awful, awful fun place to be. This is uh, something unique. I don't know that I've ever been... Uh, cheering for a club that's doing as well as what they are right now. So it's, uh, yeah, it's it's been a blast. Well, at least you'll be back from your holiday to watch the uh, last part of the season, won't you? Yeah, and we'll we'll try and pick up a little bit along the way if we can. We'll see if we can uh, see if we can get it some sports feeds and so a few places that maybe we can watch a game or two. But if not, we can always watch the highlights. Yes, YouTube is is my savior in that respect. You got that right. Yeah. <laughs> so now I just want to. Lastly, talk about just your feelings about how they're going to go. Are you confident they can make the playoffs? Yeah, I would fully expect. They they would have to have a major crash right now not to make the playoffs. Have they ever made the playoffs before? Yeah, yeah. They uh, they were in the playoffs last year, and uh, they uh, actually made it to the third round of the playoffs uh, a number of years ago. I forget what, I think it was the 2018 season when they did very well. And they were in the conference finals in which they lost out that year. So they have played very well in the past. 
they've never made it to the Stanley Cup. And so uh, that is the ultimate goal. Um, do they have an opportunity to do it this year? Yes, I think they do. Uh, the only thing is, though, that, that uh, playoff hockey is um, – they are very different than regular season. So we've seen it before where you've got a club uh, – I believe it was the Boston – Boston last year where they had an exceptional year throughout the year they lost in the first round of the playoffs four straight they never won a game in the playoffs and they were a dominant club the whole year long so playoff hockey is a different animal and uh, we'll see if the Jets can fare well or I, I, I would be optimistic for them but uh, time will tell it's a playoffs in any sport is always a different um, beast isn't it you know a lot of it's uh, Ab- the mental mental experience isn't it absolutely and uh, I think there's a lot of players on this club, at least in this version of the club right now. Uh, they haven't been there before, so some of the individuals have, but as a club, they haven't so much. Yes. Uh, it'll be fun to watch. And that can be defining. So, Don, I've got one last question for you this morning before we wrap up. So you, sure. you briefly touched on the, the players who get into the fighting. I know this is not what the game's about, but it is a unique aspect of, of the sport. So I am guessing that maybe there are special players who come on just to do the fighting. Yeah, the, you have one or two guys in the team that are typically designated for that. Um, on the odd occasion, though, I mean, I've seen Ehlers get into a scrap, and he's one of the smaller guys on the ice. Uh, you know what? If somebody's hacking at your ankles and you're tired of them, okay, now it's time to, to get the lead out here. Let's uh, let's get it on because I, I don't need this anymore. So, yeah, I mean, on the Winnipeg Jets, it would be Lowry and, and um, Brendan Dillon would be the two uh, most likely guys to fight. But uh, when Kyle Connor was injured, uh, Mark Scheifele was on the ice, and he took on the guy that hurt uh, Kyle Connor instantly, right there, right then and there. Uh, <laughs> wow. You don't do that to one of my guys, and so and so they lit it up immediately after that. And and I've watched highlights where the the refs or umpires, whatever you call them, just sort of skate around the players to contain them and just let them go for it. Yeah, yeah. If they're standing up, uh, get out of their way because they're scrapping now. As soon as somebody goes down and can't defend themselves anymore, the jumps are uh, the refs are on them immediately, and there is still some gamesmanship, I suppose you could say that uh, when you're fighting and and you're and the guy that you're fighting is down, more often than not, you're just letting go of the jerseys and skating away. At that point, it doesn't always happen, but most often it does. And. Is there a certain time limit they'll let a fight go for? Like, are they like, okay, now we're cutting into broadcast time. We can't go for longer than 30 seconds, 40 seconds? No, this ain't a boxing match. The bell doesn't ring. If the guys are standing up swinging, you're getting out of the way. Oh, jeez. Too bad we didn't get to see that. Not that I want to see people fight, but it would have been uh, something interesting to watch. Oh, yeah. I like watching them fight. It's part of the game. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right don my friend i appreciate your time this yeah. morning uh, you have a great yeah. holiday and um I want, I want to do this again when you're back because you're you're a man of much knowledge of the game and i've really enjoyed the chat this morning oh uh, yeah don't don't give me too much credit i have a, I have a, a casual knowledge of the jets i enjoy watching them and we're a little bit passionate about it so it's been real fun